Okay, so here we have project number four for this semester. This is going to be an immediate upper, immediate lower. You can see by hand articulating these models that the patient is obviously way overclosed. The practitioner has to decide how much vertical are we going to open. So what did we make for the dentist? We made some occlusion rims. And with these occlusion rims, the dentist established a new vertical dimension. We don't know if this vertical dimension is correct or if the patient can tolerate it, but we have to uh, increase the vertical dimension, not just to restore the patient's occlusion, but to restore the whole stomachnathic system, the TMJ. And then with that, we should get a prescription. And the prescription might say, please dental technician, reduce the overjet by three and a half millimeters. Dentists like using half millimeters. I'm not sure they know how big a half a millimeter is. It's very small. The plane of occlusion as marked, one to two millimeters overbite, midline is marked. So we have all the natural teeth here mounted in a average value mounting, Bonwell's triangle, average value mounting because no face bow record was taken. We've got 30 degree condylar guidance, 15 degree Bennett shift. What we need to do with our models are some model analysis. So you can do this along with me if you have a pencil. Mark the midline of the ridge, of the lower. You can outline the retromolar pad. Roughly two-thirds retromolar pad is an average value of plane of occlusion. Although the practitioner would have created a plane of occlusion with the mandibular occlusion rim, the dentist mark the midline. You can outline this huge incisive of a pillow. The midline is slightly to the patient's right here a little bit, possibly with the camera angle and this, this post in the way, I'll try to hold on an angle. You can bring the midline down the model. It's a little to the left. So, I've seen many people do the immediate denture. They just take all the stone teeth off and set the denture. We need to maintain these teeth so we can use them as a reference point of where the patient was and where we're going to put them. The first thing I would start is with this lower central. You can mark the gingival margin if you wish to use a red pencil or graphite. On the blackboard, there's step-by-step -step instructions, so you don't need to take any notes. You can revisit later. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my coping saw and I'm going to extract tooth number two one. Tooth number two one is now extracted. I have to guesstimate what the ridge is going to look like post-surgery. If I reduce too much stone structure here, the denture is not going to go into the client's mouth. If I reduce too little, the denture will be slightly slack. Famous last words, how much? Just enough. We have no idea how they're going to respond we have no idea how they're going to respond to the, uh, to the surgery. It might be more edematous for some people. The dentist might put sutures in here. There's going to be blood clotting going on. So we better err on the light side. Don't be too aggressive reducing the tooth structure or the model structure here. Once this denture is immediately inserted post extraction at surgery, teeth are taken out, dentures put in. right away. The denture is not taken out of the patient's mouth for at least 24 hours to even 48 hours. If the denture is taken out too early, 
patient will start to swell up, the denture won't go back in. So the denture is in the healing phase for the first two days. Not so much to take pictures and eat and walk and talk. Basically, these are acrylic band-aids for the patient. The immediate denture protects the extraction site from any food and debris to the surgical sites, protects the clotting, protects the sutures, and controls the swelling. Unfortunately, many clients would think that they're getting the immediate denture so they can go and have dinner the same day. Not gonna happen. They're not going from this to going eating on full upper and full lower dentures. So heavy consultation has to happen before surgery. If we were to go to the RCDS or the, especially the denturism uh, CDO, the biggest cases in their litigation, in their litigious realm, is the immediate denture. Patients wake up from surgery and they go, oh my goodness, what happened to me? They've been amputated <laughs> dentally. So, I am reducing a little bit of the, in the alveolus here, trying to create a slight conca concavity. I have the pencil mark of where the gingival margin was. Now, we really have to revisit some surgical techniques. They're not just extracting the teeth out. An oral surgeon will recontour the bone. They will take out their uh, surgical carbide and remodel the alveolar bone. Because in between each of the natural teeth is the interceptal bone, if we go to anatomy class. If you could think of like the chicken bone cartilage. And these are usually snapped off or trimmed off. Many times the teeth are just taken out and this interceptal bone is left and these what we call bony spicules or shards or bone chips that become embedded, basically like a bone splinter. And then the patient wears the denture and these splinters start to uh, reveal themselves, causing a lot of pain. So I don't wanna reduce too much bone structure. To be 100% sure, I could make a surgical stent, which I'll talk about later. Post-surgery, the dentist will put that in the client's mouth. They will see how much bone I've reduced, and they can do the same if we're going to do some bone augmentation, especially if it's for implant surgery where they've got to reduce bone height for uh, certain implant systems where we need to create some vertical space. So I'm going to start with one at a time here. This central, so I have the other central in relationship to see how much overjet I'm reducing. If I take both centrals off, I don't know where I was. So, if I had the occlusion rims on this model, I could use that to set up on, but I'm just going to go straight to finish. I'm going to have to wait. So immediate dentures is the most difficult thing. You can get the teeth taken out all at once. A more prudent method would be take out the posterior teeth first let the patient heal three, four months, and then, like this case is a real case, then at least we have a positive seat of the full denture in the posterior section of the model. So now you have a vertical stop of your base plate and your final denture. Many times they're losing all 28 or 30 cm deep. We're losing a lot of vertical dimension. We have no positive seat at all. <coughs> The biggest thing I see in the dental laboratories or in the denture clinics is that people order the teeth, 
And these denture teeth have necks on them. Well, the patient didn't lose any bone le less. Most immediate dentures, a lot of the denture teeth are ground almost to like paper thin. We have to create the space. Now this case here I've given you, I've increased the vertical dimension enough so you don't have to trim as much. Made it a little easier. Yes. I've outlined the incisive papilla. We know by average that the labial aspect of the central is around four or five millimeters from the midpoint of here. Somewhere in this position. You can see that I'm bringing this way in. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be a class one or a class two, depending on the overjet, but I can already see here from below, I think it's going to be a class one. What do you think? By bringing this in here. Step one, finished. I'll continue on to the lateral next. I may have to extract the canine in advance if I don't have enough room to squeeze the lateral in here. I can squeeze it in. I think once you do so many dentures, that most of the time is spent with the wax. So make sure your Bunsen burners have a lot of wax in them, ready to go. Even the canine, I can do the same thing. I can mark the gingival margin. I can get my saw. Now, I guess you could use a burr to trim it off, but it's too dusty. I'll use the burr for the alveolus here just to contour. If I err on the slightly larger side, it's fine because we know what's going to happen post-surgery. After the patient wears the denture for one week, they're back in the dental office. Any adjustments are alleviated if there's denture source. Then the patient is giving a tissue conditioner which is a soft reline, like co-soft. <laughs> I think that's the most popular brand. But regardless, a soft tissue conditioner that is put inside the denture, a patient would wear that for three weeks, and subsequently, every three weeks after that, for roughly the next three months, it is taken out and a new one put in. As the bone atrophies, the denture is continually being relined with a temporary soft tissue conditioner. The soft relined material, which is like a rubber soft material, uh, it has a shelf life of about three months, but should be replaced every three weeks. So the patient has their denture refit, chasing the atrophy of the bone. No sense doing a hard reline. You'll just be doing another one three months later, or three weeks later, excuse me. And until most of the bone uh, atrophy has occurred or remodeling, then the final reline is requested. If the treatment plan, many treatment plans that the immediate denture is a temporary denture. You're gonna have it for one week, year with soft liners and a final reline, and then tossed, and then start the whole denture procedure all over again with a new one. This is viable too. So there's two different ways here. But I think with economics, they want to stick with the first denture, with the soft liner, then the final hard reline, and then maybe five, six years later, get a new one. So I'm just setting these teeth up, not so much arbitrarily, but standard setup for central lateral canine. I think the canine seems to be the tooth with the 
with the bony eminence here that has to be reduced the most, the neck of the canine. There we go. Yes. The same denture setup procedure as for class one, class two, class three, zero degree, it's all the same. Okay, the occlusal scheme in the posterior section may alter if it's lingualized or zero degree. The amount of buccal overjet you put in the posterior is a personal preference on the, especially the zero degree, if it's cross bite or not, but this is a standard. We're gonna try, I believe, standard class one. For sure. I'm almost done. As I said, most of the time it seems is spent modeling the wax. And even though I was cavalier putting the first tooth in, I probably already adjusted it 10 times already. Each time the wax is still soft for all three. We have to get away from setting up one tooth at a time, put it very close to where it should be, and then you can adjust it in relation to the next tooth. I'm still setting up these three at the same time almost. Central, lateral, canine, creating the curve. I still even may change it more if I find that uh, this is out a little bit too much, the neck. Now, the midline doesn't match up with the midline on the lower. The practitioner has lowered the plane of occlusion here in pencil because these teeth have over erupted on the lower. So I'm reducing the plane of occlusion of all the lower teeth by about two and a half millimeters here. And if we can look down these, this line here, that'll match up roughly around two thirds. If I try to put something flat here. Now the midline is off, I have the plane of occlusion. The worst thing to do is do not take all the teeth off. I'll use my saw and I'll bisect a bit of the 4-1 because the midline is off. Am I on screen okay with that? You can see how narrow the 4-1 looks now because I'm moving the midline over a bit. And then what I will do is I'll set up 3-1, 3 one, three, two, three, three in relationship with the right over jet with 2-1, two, 2-2, two, two, and 2-3. And then I have a picture of where I am on the left side of the client and where they were on the right side. I've worked in some large laboratories, medium size, where they would just take this model over to the lathe with the big white wheel and trim all the teeth off. I'm like, you're losing valuable information of, of where we want to go. So now you can see I've reduced this you can see my prosthetic tooth in relation to the natural teeth. I'm gonna reduce the length a little bit more. And here we have 2-1 versus 3-1. My overjet is a little bit more than I would like, so I have the option here to either set up in class two, reduce the, the labial uh, aspect of 2-1, or maybe slightly cheat a little bit, not to go way off the ridge, but kind of tilt out my 3-1 a little bit more. And there I have my relationship under here. 
This is almost a class two. I'm, my over jet is at about three. I'm gonna bring this central in just slightly. And this is probably the more critical stage right now. Because once you have this anterior arrangement defined with overbite and overjet, things are kind of set for the posterior section. If I don't have this created correctly, then I'm into changing the occlusion. Next. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I'll do the next two at the same time because I don't have enough space mesial distal to put in the lateral. If I've left a little too much stone, when I go to process after boiling out, I can still take my knife in the plaster room and recontour the model at that time, if I wish which I still may do if I have any sharp pieces of stone because I'd hate them to break off and be embedded into my acrylic. And we know what that's like when we're investing the partial. Will the stone breaks off the flash, works its way into the denture base. So here, the interceptal bone is very close to almost the, doesn't line up where my lateral is going to be. So I'm just gonna go on top of that. We have to be really uh, contoured when we're doing the immediate denture. So many clients with the immediate denture, they've lost their teeth, but they didn't lose any bone yet. And now we're adding flange and palate. Their mouth feels like three times the size. They just lost their teeth. But we're replacing not just the teeth. Now I'm adding all this stuff down the sulcus. Most of the clients, they look a little too over contoured. So we need to really uh, manage our contour in the uh, width and length of the denture base. Now that I've got my lowers on there, I'm going back. I even adjusted my upper slightly. Now that's what I have now. I may change it slightly, but that's consistent. If it's two, three, three and a half, two and a half millimeters, the biggest thing is to keep your overjet consistent. Don't have one millimeter or no overjet, and then the other side you got four. That doesn't make sense. Try to maintain the same overjet on all the denture teeth. Now I can see where it's hitting the stone right here, where I'm pointing with the number seven. I gotta reduce there. I think implant dentures, like I said, is some of the most dangerous treatment for the client if the consultation wasn't uh, heavy enough, that they really understand what's happening to them. And especially now with the advent of all on four, all on five, and implant surgery and teeth in a day, you've seen the advertisements in the newspaper or the magazine. These are expensive treatment plans. And they're starting off with an interim denture implants, implant supported prosthetic with denture teeth and eventually may go to a fixed zirconia or some other type of hybrid. These are expensive treatment plans and if the patient doesn't really understand what's, what's happening to them, then a lot of miscommunication can end up in a lot of uh, mm, post-treatment turmoil, let's call it.
I was doing one of these in conjunction with a dentist on the uh, all on four implant supported dentures and the assistant says oh I have the diagnostic model if you want I said oh you have diagnostic models yeah when we made the patient uh, bleaching trays I'm like so they undergone bleaching of teeth that were going to be extracted four months later so you can see some of the uh, iatrogenic things that can happen at the dental office so maybe the motivation, right away I went, oh, so they're getting the all-in-four because they don't like the shade of their teeth. There might be nothing wrong with their dentition, but they figured, no, I want A1 or BL1, A0. So they couldn't achieve that bleaching, so now they said, oh, we'll just do all-in-four denture prosthetics, top and bottom. Okay. So we really need to know why are we getting implant dentures? Why? The patient's got periodontal disease. They've got subsequent tooth loss. They've got mobility. They've got five, six periapical abscesses and pockets and excessive bone loss. So instead of restoring these individually, sometimes the best treatment plan is, okay, we're going to take them out. I'm gonna go back to my two, three and move the neck in a little bit. So one thing you should be seeing here is don't be afraid to put the tooth in, take it out again. Don't just set it in and say, oh, I'm done. Take it back on. You can put it back on. It doesn't take long. It, sometimes it's painful but it could be painful when you've got all 28 teeth set up and then now you want to take one or two and move the midline. That's painful. Now's the time to kind of assess, reassess. And I'm only looking for one position. I should be using the, this side from behind. In my office, I'll have a mirror so I see the reflection of what I saw because I'm right eye dominant. I see the reverse. Lots of different techniques you can do to check your perception. I'm still not satisfied with this one here. So there I have the upper three, the lower three, with the correct, uh, very close to the correct overbite, and very close to the correct overjet. That's not saying I might not tweak it slightly when I do the other side. So I'm. Now, departing from how I used to set up dentures, I would do all the top six teeth. Here, I'm going to do the top three and the bottom three so I can see where they were and where they're going to be. If I lose these reference points, I'm lost because I had this prescription that told me overjet three, plane of occlusion, or reduce the overjet. Because right now, they had like about a 12 millimeter overjet from opening the bite because the teeth were splayed out labially. Now, I've got to bring them back in. And now, this is a real case. If you look down from the top view, where does the labial contour of this central go? Right here inside the land area. That's a rule of thumb, and it seems to be holding true here again. And here's my incisive pillar here. Okay, five to seven millimeters. Following the contour of the ridge around here. Now, when I look at the lowers, they might be slightly more labial to the existing once. I may have cheated a half a millimeter out here. I really refrain from cheating a lot and going way out here to achieve class one, which a lot of people do. I'm outside the neutral zone. The facial muscles of expression, we're going to hit here, push the denture up, creating it unstable. If I have to come way out here to achieve class one, skip the class one, stay on the ridge, it's class two. That's what it's going to be. Here, I think I can cheat ever so slightly to create somewhat of a class one occlusion.